and, and more precisely, there is a committee on the future in the Finnish parliament. And that, that committee on the future, it's, it's like an in-house uh, think tank in the sense that they have not so much to do with actually current legislation, but actually they are they're really trying to look forward uh, uh, over a longer period. And, and, and I'm, I'm really grateful that we have their support. Um, the vice chair of that co committee, Mr. Kasvi, is, is here in, 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 in Hyderabad, but uh, he's one of the two parliamentarians we have here, and I think that he's now speaking at one of the workshops we have organized together with ICC. Uh, we have, uh, of course, businesses, uh, Confederation of Electronic Industries, we have Nokia, of course, and we have uh, uh, civil society in the form of uh, Electronic Frontier Foundation, ISOC uh, Finnish Chapter, and One World uh, Finland. Uh, uh, we, uh, we see our task as a fairly narrow one. We're not really worrying about broadband in Finland or something like that. Our task is just disseminate information about IGF and, and pre to prepare for the, for the next one. And as a concrete example, we have a, we have a workshop, uh, if I may <laughs> put a little plug here, uh, today, <laughs> 2.30 uh, to 4 uh, in room 5, uh, capacity building for web 2.0, uh, where we have uh, uh, Finnish multi-stakeholders and, and a couple of Indian representatives discussing uh, how to, discussing the question, uh, what else is needed uh, apart from technical access if you want to bring a billion uh, new users uh, of the internet online. Thank you. Um, maybe I will give the, the floor to uh, Kusai now to talk about Kuwait. Um, Same name. questions, where did it come from? Sure. Uh, uh, just again for the people who did, or was not here before, uh, my name is Kusai al Shati and I'm from the Kuwait Information Technology Society. Um, early on this year we have the what is called the Central Agency for Information Technology it created uh, a work group on national IG. And actually, the reason to create this group is a reflection of the IG issue, which was discussed during the WSIS and later on in the IGF process, and being aware of the importance of the issues, uh, and recognize the fact that if we want to benefit from the IG as a global issue, we need first to address these issues on a national level and understanding what our priorities, uh, what, do, what the issues at the stake and issues of importance, uh, and this way we can develop a position for our own that can we reflect and enable us to participate in a proactive manner on an international level when it comes issues to IG. Um, the committee was established based on a multi-stakeholder approach. There are people from the government, there are people from the private sector, there is people also from the civil society. And it was chaired by, the, by a member from the private sector, actually, uh, a representative of the Chamber of Commerce hmm. in Kuwait. Um, the role of the committee was mainly to advise the agency on a national level on issues related to internet governance. Sorry, Kusai, how many members and is it very structured? It's, it's, uh, so far it's a, a six member group. Okay. Uh, it, it's, it's a work group actually under the central agency for information technology. And how were they chosen? Was it? Um, um, the uh, private sector member is a member of the board of the central agency also, so okay. he became the, uh, also a chair of the committee. And the uh, representative from the central agency, was, uh, uh, from the government, are central agency's staff, and uh, being me from civil society. Um, the committee task and role was to advise the central agency on issues related to IG, 
uh, issues related to CCTLD, the dot KW CCTLD. And of, as a request from the private sector, uh, they requested that dispute resolution to be addressed at this stage. Um, interestingly enough, we just concluded our draft report for the for a national IG approach. Uh, and just I will just want to point out to my colleague Rachel Asfour, who is also a member of the working group. She's with us, and she's a lawyer, and uh, she's uh, right now our reference in ELOs in Kuwait. Um, within our work, we are proposing a national framework. We thought that there is an that it is important to address our work within a national uh, framework and. We are proposing a national framework starting from identifying our priorities. What is our priorities within internet governance? And of course, if we want to address anything within that framework, it should be in a multi-stakeholder fashion, so emphasizing the, co the, 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 the collective multi-stakeholder approach of discussing any IG issue. Um, we need also to address measures, laws, regulations, commitments that we have right now, uh, whether it's on our CCTLD or whether it is on issues that is related to IG. So if I understand well, it is um, broad ranging issues related to the internet from the critical resources yes. to the policy. Yes. And mostly as an advisory, a small advisory working group, multi-stakeholder for the official agency. Is there any plan to have the second side of the coin, which is using this group to organize uh, workshops or to organize outreach efforts for people from a broader, uh, from the broader community, to feed into your your group as a sort of filter or mechanism. That's that's a goal to us. Okay. That's that's a goal uh, to address the a larger audience and bringing them into board regarding this issue. Uh, uh, we recognize that the internet governance is so wide in issues and so wide and, and uh, so wide in, 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 in topics and themes, and we need to bring people on board from different areas. Um, one of the things that, just to, to reflect on that, is uh, we are proposing a policy dialogue within that framework. And, in, and within that policy dialogue, we are talking about what should be as national themes, best practices, and do we have emerging issues? When you say policy dialogue, is organizing a exactly. broad dialogue and re with outreaching. physical meetings or not? Uh, and of course, outreaching the bigger audience, whatever it takes, whether it is physical meetings, whether it okay. is online consultation, uh, and, and various means. Um, when we came to the critical internet resources, for example, we, uh, we recognized that, for example, uh, infrastructure is a critical issue to us. Mm. Um, we don't have rules if, if I can, if I can um, stop you, maybe on the substantive issues uh, to, to focus more on the, uh, on the organizational matter, because the, the main okay. element is fundamentally each subgroup uh, is identifying its own, its own topics. So what we would like here is to, is to focus more. And I would make a bridge between what uh, Uryo and uh, what you just said. Basically, what Uryo mentioned is um, there, there are flat hierarchies in, uh, in Finland, and it's a relatively small country, which introduces the cultural di differences in terms of approaches. For instance, the question of involvement of parliamentarians is different in the different countries. They can be more sensis sensitized to one issue or than in another one. Uh, in your case, it's interesting to see that the, um, the mechanism is to somehow create an intermediary uh, level between the real formal governmental structure have a sort of um, what we call in French a SAS, like a, a, a passageway and, a, and, um, and an interface that allows to do the outreach afterwards. So take a first step 
making it multi-stakeholder, and that this can, in the end, uh, continue. So it's important to see how it's different in, in, in different uh, regions. Do you have any other specific comments on the organizational uh, matter? Because I'd like also to, to finish the panelists and leave some room for, for the time. Of course, uh, we'd like to see uh, a more structured approach within all stakeholders. That means even structuring the involvement of civil society, yeah. structuring the involvement of the business community, structuring the involvement of government, as well as, and that's not something we are shy of, bring expertise from outside Kuwait to assist us in case we needed some assistance to understand issues better. Uh, it may happen. That's an interesting question that very few people have uh I've mentioned is the potential of other um, either regional actors or even broader to come into national IGFs to, to discuss? International organization, for example, is a recognized multi-stakeholder, mm -hmm. uh, even during the OSIS. So why not benefiting from their experience and uh, take advantage of them on a national level? Actually, you're, you're, you're raising a very interesting issue that I didn't we, we will come a little bit to that when we talk about the Council of Europe's involvement in the Eurodic, maybe, and, and probably, um, yeah, the t time, time is running. Sure. So I will um, just give the floor to um, Stefano uh, to make the transition between the national IGS, but also a brief mention about the um, uh, thematic IGF, uh, the Farm and Internet Rights, and then we'll move to the regional ones with uh, East Africa and uh, Europe. Okay, thank you. I will briefly describe how the idea of creating the uh, IGF Italy was conceived and then realized. So uh, the partners <coughs> that were able to realize this have been the Minister of Innovation, CNR, and the ISOC chapter. And I will briefly describe how the idea was born. First of all, uh, the Minister for Innovation is the minister that is in charge of the information society matters. And uh, uh, he may rely on uh, a group of experts on internet governance. Internet governance, of course, is the key uh, as a, uh, let's say, a matter of, of study also. And um, in my presentation, I say that I belong to the National Council for Research, that is uh, uh, the National Research that council that um, is specialized, uh, permit me this term, in, uh, also in multidisciplinary uh, arguments, the themes like uh, the internet governance is. So um, uh, we conceived this idea and uh, in uh, May this year we organized uh, a, a large meeting on, uh, at CNR for May where uh, we presented a, a sort of a debriefing from the uh, Rio meeting. And uh, the third part, and I mentioned, is ISOC uh, chapter of Italy, and I'm sharing it. And uh, the uh, ISOC chapter is, uh, has two scope, uh, as many other chapters. The first one is to spread internet culture, and the second one is to collect uh, opinion uh, from the community uh, about uh, themes that are, are of interest of the local internet community. So in this meeting in Rome, we presented a, a book written in Italian uh, concerning the debriefing of Rio and ideas in the direction of creating uh, the uh, IGF Italy. And, uh, so, um, in the title is also uh, written the, uh, what, what is uh, our motto, is uh, think globally, act locally. And um, so, uh, why this? Because we adopted the, the idea of the um, IGF, the, this IGF, the global one, that is uh, a perfect uh, model of uh, multi-stakeholderism, uh, is a word that we use here often, 
where all the uh, participants are, uh, are participating on, on equal footing. And, uh, uh, but uh, uh, someone told that uh, being IGF a talk show, talk shop is uh, negative. But uh, in our opinion, it is a, a positive aspect and also uh, gives the, the possibility of uh, uh, creating the best practices that then uh, are simply a recommendation for behavior in different aspects and is uh, the maximum we uh, can reach here. Is, uh, Stefano, is the, uh, the focus of the uh, national IGF more about issues being dealt with in Italy or about I'm, interfacing I'm, within international? Uh, thanks for the question. I'm coming to it uh, very quickly. So, uh, in Italy we, um, of course, wanted to follow the uh, parliamentarian's uh, uh, suggestion to create a national IGF that was made on January uh, 2008, as well as the regional one where we are talking after. So in, uh, uh, in the week of the Eurodig, in the same week we organized in Cagliari uh, a meeting that was uh, uh, called by the Minister of Innovation and by the, uh, the head of the uh, Sardinia region. Uh, uh, so, uh, and this was uh, actually the constitution of the uh, of the um, of the IGF Italy. So, what what is our goal? Uh, is actually uh, first of all to organize a debriefing of this meeting. This will be done in a few months from now. But then is to locate arguments that are of particular interest for the uh, local community. So uh, one of these arguments uh, is the Internet Bill of Rights matter uh, that may derive here into some uh, stronger alliance on uh, uh, rights uh, on the Internet. <coughs> and uh, since uh, both the uh, ISOC chapter of Italy and the government of Italy uh, were funding members of the uh, Dynamic Coalition on Internet Bill of Rights. We want to continue that. And uh, uh, it has been al already uh, said, in, in, uh, not in general circles, that we intend to organize uh, another meeting uh, in the middle of next year in order to advance even more. So this is an activity of, uh, um, let's say, uh, doing this intersessional work that is very, very important in order that the, uh, the general meetings then can advance substantially for IPv6, but uh, uh, we, are, we have already uh, another candidate arguments that uh, have to be approved by, let's say, those that attended the IGF Italy and then uh, uh, will be uh, realized through special meetings uh, involving, of course, uh, both the civil society, the private sector, and the government itself. The, so, Stefano, just, just one point. On the uh, forum uh, on the Bill of Rights, it, w it is hosted by Italy, but I understand that uh, given the coordination uh, that is emerging, uh, it is becoming a regular sort of thematic forum that might be organized every, every year uh, on an issue-based uh, approach because we're talking here mostly about the geographic uh, pyramid, uh, the national, the regional, and the international. What is emerging and what was clear yesterday in the security issue is that the issue-based approach is important as well. And uh, I thought it was interesting to have one, one example of a thematic approach and the relationship with the dynamic coalitions. It's, uh, it, it would take a long time to, uh, to explore it further. But I think the notion of thematic uh, forum is important. In the, in the sake of time, would you excuse me, uh, Stefano, if I um, 
uh, interrupt you here because I may be overloaded in special national element. Is there any point you want to make? Because yeah, I just, just uh, don't want to just say the final about the structure. Yeah. Uh, so uh, is uh, as in other cases uh, there is not a legally constituted IGF Italy mm -hmm. or something like that. We are working in a uh, in a frame that is similar to the dynamic coalitions here. <coughs> let's say. Uh, so a number of actors that are recognizing uh, this uh, uh, scope and uh, modalities of work then uh, get together and put human and possibly also financial resources to organize uh, events mm -hmm. in order to advance with this. So this is the present structure. Then concerning the uh, when you mentioned the, the um, Bill of Rights and, and things connected to this, this is something that uh, from Italy, IGF is made uh, for the global community, yeah. let's say, uh, and I make the difference uh, with the other um, arguments that uh, will be devoted to uh, internal uh, yes. problems. So this is uh, our scheme and uh, how we want to operate. And uh, in the um, emerging issue sessions, uh, you will be here from Claudio Lenoschi uh, some more uh, commitment for the uh, next year uh, meeting for internet lights. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Um, Maybe you want to say that the meeting of the Dynamic Coalition is going to take place this afternoon, Dynamic Coalition on Internet Bill of Rights. Is it, is it uh, this afternoon? I thought it was at the end at of, least of to the my, morning. To my old schedule, maybe they changed. <laughs> Yeah. Was changed. <laughs> okay, so then it's tomorrow. <coughs> okay, we have two two last experiments that are uh, at the uh, regional level. One is the uh, East African. The other one is the uh, Eurotic. As you grab the mic, you can you can start. Or I'd I'd rather have Alice first if you don't mind. <laughs> Um, thank you, Bertrand, and thank you for organizing this. And I'm awfully sorry for the limitation of time. It's just due to the interest of, of the subject. <laughs> um, well, the East African uh, Internet Governance Forum was a result of uh, national IGFs that took place in the four East African countries of Rwanda, Tanzania, Kenya, and Uganda. Uh, and this comes way back. Uh, the initiative was spearheaded by a network, in, a multi-stakeholder network in Kenya that was formed out of the WISIS Geneva process. The, the multi-stakeholder network is called the Kenya ICT Action Network. And it's a forum that brings together the government institution, private sector, civil society, media, and, and individual internet users, including consumer groups, uh, into one forum to discuss issues of uh, policy uh, and has actually uh, been quite successful in developing ICT-related policy in Kenya, uh, including the freedom of information uh, uh, bills and, and, and all the others. So it's the network that initiated this process after hav having attended the first two Internet Governance Forum uh, in, in Greece and, and in Brazil and realizing that there was very limited participation of especially East African uh, stakeholders in, uh, in the IGF process. Uh, so I went back uh, to Kenya and spoke with other networks in the four East African countries and then uh, agreed on uh, uh, an East African IGF, but uh, with a process that began at, at the grassroots level or at the very, you know, at, at the national level. Uh, so what happened in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, in Kenya, Uganda, the four East African countries, we started off with a mailing list discussion on just trying to identify our own local internet governance issues at the national level. Once that was done uh, at the national level, the, there were four face-to-face -face workshops that were held between uh, September and October, which then formed the building block for the East African in, uh, Internet Governance Forum that took place in November, right after the ICANN meeting in Egypt. So you basically as, had an agenda setting discussion among yourselves. Yes. N just didn't pick the, uh, the themes no. of the IGF, or was it related? 
Uh, we did not pick the, the theme of the IGFs at all. In fact, we didn't even introduce them uh, at, at any point. It's only uh, during the East African IGF that we, we began to then make the links uh, and found that you know some of the issues like access, we were taking the IGF all the way back to the first IGF because we were discussing really basic issues of access. Uh, and yet, uh, you know, not all countries are equal because in Kenya, we are, the government is very keen uh, on developing, you know, what we are calling state-of-the-art infrastructure, uh, which will then feed the four East, the five East African countries. Uh -huh. um, uh, the other difference in the, is that, in, for example, in the four East African countries, there was very high political uh, engagement as well. Uh, we had MPs in Kenya, uh, and, and specifically the, the chair of the parliamentary committee that deals specifically with uh, ICTs in Kenya, uh, is, is involved in, all the way right to the prime, minister, uh, prime minister's office. Uh, in terms in, and in the other four countries, the government uh, was, was involved. In Rwanda, the Rwandan uh, regulatory authorities, all, actually all the regulatory authorities were, were involved in the four East African countries. Uh, including the you know, media owners and, and civil society, and most important also the international uh, uh, international community, uh, the International Development Research Center, the Canadian one, DFID, um, the IGF itself, we had Marcus Kuma attending. That's a point I wanted to, uh, yes. to, to ask you about. This is an illustration of what uh, Kusai was also mentioning, that it's not because it's a national or regional yes. entity that it must be limited in participation to actors who are at just that level. Yes. Yeah, we also, you know, had quite a lot of discussion with, with others, for example, in the UK with Nominate. Uh, even though there wasn't much there, but uh, there was, you know, the back and forth in terms of beginning to share uh, our experiences. Uh, the Center for Global Communication, uh, Glocom in Japan, ISOC attended. Uh, so we had quite, you know, uh, well, limited but not limited at the same time of international uh, organizations that attended the East African IGF. Although it was mainly very localized, uh, you know, looking at the, the way it, it progressed from the national level all the way to, you know, and then now we are here. And before we left, the Tanzanian uh, Regulatory Authority offered to host. Uh, the next East African IGF. Oh, okay. So there's going to be a next an East African IGF in 2009 and in uh, 2010 as well, uh, for just following on the on the global. Uh, and then the issues identified. We actually prioritized issues, uh, four or five issues that we felt needed uh, to be subjected to more additional research uh, to create our own local understanding, mm. as well as capacity building, especially for our po uh, policy makers and those engaged in this process, just to, be, to ensure that we are, you know, we are engaging many f meaningfully uh, with, with the global process. So it's not just uh, talking, we, we want to see some concrete uh, initiatives coming out of it. And so we've taken the example of uh, uh, Germany, where we're coming up with a, our own uh, um, capacity okay. building program, a scholar program in one of the, the universities in, in Kenya that is going to provide um, um, a scholar program on some of the priority issues and also developing the, uh, the capacity of local experts. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I will now give the, uh, the floor to uh, Thomas uh, Schneider to talk about the uh, Eurodig which is the European uh, effort. Thank you. Um, actually, already in two, uh, 2007, there were several discussions about starting a European initiative. There were uh, many people present in Rio last year who were thinking loudly about uh, becoming active in, uh, on a European level, uh, in addition to the, the, the few national initiatives that were there. Um, but uh, uh, then during, uh, uh, let's say, and also Switzerland, since Switzerland is not yet an official member of the European Union, uh, we were also thinking of having a national pro uh, pro uh, uh, in uh, initiative. We started with, in 2003 with having a multi-stakeholder multi process for the WISIS uh, uh, thing. But we decided to wait and to, to see what is happening on European level with regard to the IGF before we would do something on national level or together with the Germans and the Austrians on, on, on German-speaking level. 
But 2008, until the, the, uh, the, the middle of the year, nothing really happened on, on the European level. So uh, when we were at the ICANN meeting in, in Paris in June 2008, there were a bunch of people sitting in a restaurant in Paris and, and discussing the fact that nothing uh, was probably going to happen on European level. So we decided, OK, then it's us who uh, try to make it happen. And that was Petro, uh, Urio, uh, um, uh, Wolfgang, uh, myself, and, and Annette uh, uh, Lee Hibbert of the Council of Europe, of course, Annette uh, Mühlberg from, from the trade union, the German, uh, and, and some business people, including uh, Ayesha Hassan from the ICC. Um, so um, we were just a, a, a group of, of people from different stakeholders in different uh, countries that that we're trying to, 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 to build something. And, and uh, we were very happy that the Council of Europe uh, uh, was, was uh, ready to, to put their facilities and, 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 their, and their rooms at our disposal so that we had a, a place to host the event. But it is not a Council of Europe event. It's a multi-stakeholder event driven by this uh, a group of people uh, which call themselves something like Core Net, uh, no, Program Network. I don't know what we, I don't even know what <laughs> we call ourselves. Yeah. We are just <laughs> the initiators of, of, of the UOD. Uh, we had a, a website, we had a name, thanks to Wolfgang Jurdik, which is European Dialogue on Internet Governance. Um, the date was for, uh, October 2021. And uh, already in Paris, we tried to develop kind of uh, uh, the outline of a, of a concrete program, and we were uh, we agreed that we should build on, on the issues that are going to be discussed here in Hyderabad, but that we will focus on, on the aspects of those issues that were most, or we thought at least, were most relevant to Europe. Um, <clears throat> um, we we uh, decided to have two days uh, uh, and have five sessions. One was setting the scene, one was on access, two sessions on security, privacy and openness, one on critical internet resources, and, and then there was a show and tell session about the initiatives of Europeans uh, that organize workshops in Hyderabad. So it was, uh, on one hand it was a, a thematic discussion, and on the other hand it was also a preparation and an information f uh, to, to, that lead to Hyderabad, that people knew what, what Europeans were doing in Hyderabad. And uh, uh, of course, we did not have too, many, too much time. It was, it was uh, uh, late June, and we had the summer break, and then it was in October when the thing was supposed to happen. So we had to, to be rather uh, uh, quick uh, and, and spontaneous <laughs> and, 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 and light. And, and, and we didn't have any resources at all apart from the facilities uh, that the Council of Europe was putting at the disposal, and they paid the website that was also done by uh, Wolfgang's people. Um, so uh, after the, after the summer break, we we uh, was uh, were, were finalizing the program, uh, 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 the issues, uh, focusing the issues, and uh, with regard to access, we were focusing on on the question of whether or not to include broadband in a universal service, uh, access to, uh, for people with, for people with disabilities. With regard to security, privacy, and openness, we were trying to. Uh, uh, have a look at how to foster those three principles at the same time, because it's it's no use when you're secure in the internet, but you're not free to 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 go where you want. It's like if you have the safest car in the world, but you're not allowed to drive the roads that you want to go, uh, to drive to where you want to go. And, uh, Thomas, I, if I if I, if you allow me, um, instead of of maybe discussing the the substance that we we came out with because i think like it was done in germany and in other places uh, there was a very interesting exercise afterwards to produce a message that you have here as a copy which is basically something that circulates the main points that are being discussed and it's probably one element that is common or potentially common to the processes to develop a one pager or a two pager for each of the events uh, the point I would like to, to, to you to elaborate on is, in terms of perspective for the future, you made the distinction that it is not a Council of Europe event, but at the same time the fact that the Council of Europe was the host provided a broader European landscape in terms of participants. And the second thing is the connection with a parallel parliamentarian track and how we can relate with the European Parliament, for instance, in that respect. Okay, thank you. Um, with regard to, to, to the participants, there were 150 participants, not only from the European Union, mm. but from Spain to Iceland to, to the Ukraine down to Turkey. So, uh, so it was really a pan-European forum. We also had a video message by uh, Ms. Redding uh, uh, from the European Commission, and we had uh, several uh, European parliamentarians like Katrin Troutman and, and Malcolm Harper um, uh, that were participating in the event. Um, 
with regard to to the maybe one word about the format, uh, we were trying to go even one step further than the IGF and and have an interactive discussion with everybody on the same level. Meaning that we were trying to avoid to have panels that take up half half an hour or an hour and then to go in, into a public debate. We, so we we tried to. Uh, put some key speakers we know that they had something to say in the public and there was basically no panel there was just one or two two moderators and, and the public and we did not have enough time to, to, to really go into detail with preparation, so it worked more or less well. Sometimes it ended up like kind of having a, a panel, but they were just not sitting on a panel. But <laughs> the, the second day was already much better than the first one, so there was also a learning experience that, that we made during, during this uh, uh, thing. About the, um, the uh, uh, cooperation with the European Parliament. Um, the Parliament has has a, 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 a resolution that they, they give them uh, some resources, and they plan to hold an event in in, in the first trimester of 2009. They had a, 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 a hearing in in November uh, about uh, also going towards the European IGF, and I was not there, but Wolfgang was not uh, was there, and Lee Hiba from the Council of Europe, who is one of the main drivers, if not the main driver behind, uh, was doing the most, is kind of part of the secretariat uh, of of the Eurodic without without uh, having any resources. Um, and and uh, they had discussions, and we are now uh, looking on how to join those two initiatives uh, that the, the European Parliament, who was already participating actively in the first juridic, will maybe host a, a, an event in, 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 uh, uh, that is leading up to the second juridic in, in early 2009 that will try to set the issues or set, set the scene, and then uh, uh, in the second half of 2009 there will be uh, a, a second Eurodic event that would uh, include the, 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 the input and the discussions uh, uh, of the European Parliament. So we're about to discuss this, and, and, and people agree that, that it, it, it's not, it's not uh, intelligent to have two parallel universes, and uh, of course uh, we think that a European uh, IGF or a European Dialogue on Internet uh, 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 Governance should be pan-European. That means it should cover all the 47 countries of Europe, all the stakeholders, and, and this is not contested. I, I must confess that I've been a bad moderator this morning in terms of uh, time, time management. The thing uh, I would like maybe now to, to, to allow people to raise questions, but what you, what you need to know is that one of the objectives of this workshop was not only to present the diversity, but to basically get the people together and we will try to set up a dynamic coalition on this issue so that there is further exchange on the uh, different processes, the best practices and the guidelines. So the questions that you want to raise now, uh, we can be discussing them further on uh, afterwards and you're very strongly invited to leave your card uh, on the exit, for instance, on this table, so that we can put you on the list if you want to participate. I know that George. Uh, can I, can I just yes. Say, I'm going to leave in a few minutes because we have a discussion about how to engage more parliamentarians. Okay. <laughs> and I, I, th I think I hope to join that. Uh, that might be useful. But thanks very much for, for joining, and you, you'll be. Um, George. You came here for just a second, please. Yeah. I, I have some can I have a microphone? Yes. Yeah, okay. Does this work? Yeah, uh, thank you. Due to the lateness of the hour, I'll skip the introduction. Uh, I have uh, questions that apply to all representatives of national IGFs here. Uh, let me make one small comment. We all know how the IGF was established. It was among governments in a UN setting. And uh, there is one basic difference between what I, what, between what I heard here, in fact, of, in terms of decision making and uh, the IGF. Uh, we have an advisory group, it's not a decision making group, and the ultimate authority is the Secretary General. Now, what I would like to ask is how the agenda is set in the national IGFs and who is taking those decisions, who is making those decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, more specifically, uh, to the UK, are parliamentarians from different parties participating? Um, why do you want to ultimately develop a framework you mentioned? Uh, what was your greatest accomplishment so far, assuming that you want to influence policy? And have you gained any recognition by media? 
um, so far. And, and this can apply to all. Uh, it seems that we have very different structures in front of us. Uh, from what I heard uh, for the um, African uh, IGF, it seems that you are complementing some of the shortcomings of the system uh, with what you have, even though you are um, government dependent in a way, then Germany uh, does not have government, it invites government uh, to participate. Um, but it seems, I, I would like to know, as I said, how is the uh, decision making process taking place? Uh, that's my primary consideration. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if, as you are likely to leave right now, maybe you can answer quickly to the specific question of the diversity of parliamentarians. Yeah, thanks very much. Um, you're right about where the IGF started as a decision amongst governments in a UN setting. As they, at that time, I was a minister. Uh, but there was the aspiration, even at that stage, to say this mustn't be governmental, it must involve all the partners. The multi-stakeholder yeah. uh, approach was actually endorsed and agreed, both by the United Nations side and by, by the governments who persisted in Tunis. And that's very important as, a, as, the, as the authoritative starting point. So I think we, we, we agree about that. Um, secondly, as far as the advisory group for the IGF is concerned, uh, all I can say is that the different stakeholders in the UK involved in the UK IGF make a contribution to the people who attend from the UK. I mean, Emily Taylor, of nominate, has be, represented us and has been very sensitive to listening to the, uh, to, to the wider, wider views. It, comes back to how important relationships and building trust and confidence uh, are to the effectiveness of the uh, of the of, of the issues how the agenda is set essentially through a process of discussion and debate very similar to the ones that have been described uh, by other people nobody owns it but a number of us which would include uh, representatives from nominate myself and one or two colleagues have taken leadership role in trying to create an environment in which others would uh, participate. So it's not leadership in a traditional sense, it's enabling leadership, if you like, that has been provided. Um, yes, parliamentarians for different parties are involved. As I said, Ian Taylor, he's gone off to, the, to a panel meeting, uh, is a former Conservative minister. That means that politically we're able to, um, to say to, to, to d colleagues in different parties, this is a process in which we uh, have a place and a voice. Uh, why do we need a framework? I think sooner or later uh, you need to describe uh, the nature of what you are doing in a way that doesn't take a couple of hours and a book uh, and a treatise in cooperative governance, uh, which is familiar to some of us, uh, but to other people is a total turn-off. Um, just as it's important to get past people thinking this is about the internet, about IT, where is it isn't. Uh, it's it's merely recognizing uh, the uh, omnipresence of the internet as what I've described as the uh, the veins and arteries uh, of uh, uh, 21st century communications. And if you don't look after the health of the veins and the arteries and the heart itself, uh, then bits of the body are going to start dropping off. Uh, and that is why this is such an important uh, element of uh, uh, sort of IT medical research, if you like, as uh, uh, and, and development. Uh, successes so far, I'd point to two. Uh, one predates the IGF, and that is the development of the partnership to tackle child abuse online. Uh, that means that we have had no new legislation. Uh, the partners are government, uh, including police and the enforcement agencies, the industry, particularly the, uh, the ISPs, uh, and civil society represented by uh, the children's charities uh, and John who's played a leading role in that at John Carr uh, has been one of the speakers on a, on a, on a panel here. Um, the fact is that uh, it's almost unique for something as important regarded publicly as important as child abuse not to have legislation. 
Uh, and the reason is because people have confidence in that process. It ended up, it took, it took a long time to get industry to get engaged, it has to be said. Um, it, we nearly got to the point of nearly having to legislate for the engagement of industry in the way that you had to do in, in, uh, in, in Brazil, for instance. Uh, but we didn't. We, we managed to escape that because industry came to the table. You would almost think that the industry invented that approach now. Uh, but w w the, I did the as a minister with my colleague at the Home Office did the assessment of the process uh, three years ago and what we said was at the end of it we have achieved more in two years without legislation than we could have achieved in ten years with legislation. Uh, so uh, th that shows uh, a positive outcome. Other issues are far more difficult to deal with than child abuse because it's easy to get everyone to agree that child abuse is a bad thing. But the achievement there is reducing from something like 16% uh, of uh, images being uh, sourced from within the UK to less than 0.1% uh, over a, over a two-year uh, period. The other success is, uh, is persuading uh, government uh, not to run off and do things with a, a top-down approach. We're engaging with the government across a number of departments uh, because actually it's very difficult to trust a cooperative approach, a partnership approach. Uh, ministers want to do things. Uh, governments want to uh, produce frameworks and plans and things like that. They feel unhappy if they haven't got some pieces of paper that, uh, uh, that show a, a map for the direction forward. So actually trusting uh, in, in a process like this, which is still very fragile, I don't want to pretend it's, a, it's yeah, a, an it's established a and successful way. way forward. Very, very fragile, very much at the early stages, uh, very much uh, starting to toddle, n not ready to run a marathon. Uh, but the ambition, if you've got a child learning to walk, is that one day they'll be able to run a marathon. And I think, I think we're, we're at, that, at, at that very early stage. Final point I'd make is that uh, we, we feel that we need to tackle some big issues. And that's why we're looking at crime, internet-related crime, not cyber cybercrime, not just technical crime, but the way criminals use the internet uh, is the way to avoid meaningless legislation in that area, but we think that's a very difficult topic, but that's why we're trying to tackle that one as, if you like, our thematic choice, uh, to go back on to the point that was being made very well by, uh, by, by our Italian colleagues, by Stefan here. Yeah. Yeah. Does that help? Can I say something? I, I want to add uh, something on another subject. Using the label. I mean, IGF country, because uh, uh, this was recommended uh, by Nitin Desai, the chair of IGF, before the European Parliament uh, recommended to create the uh, country IGFs. So, uh, but uh, uh, when doing something like we did, we asked, the, is there any definition, any procedure, any formal <laughs> recognition to the local IGFs? The answer is no, in the sense that uh, yeah. it is a spontaneous move that we made. And uh, so unless uh, someone came in and say IGF is a trademark, uh, and then you have a procedure to become a, a local IGF, uh, what we did uh, when we started, uh, uh, I tried to call uh, uh, Finland, uh, France, uh, UK, in order to know how they did, how they created. And uh, if you look at, at the expositions that we had today, you find that any country did it in a, its personal way. Mm. And uh, because uh, it's something that is adapted to the need, adapted to the yes. equilibrium that we have in the countries. Uh, so, uh, we, this is a very good uh, learning exercise because uh, each one can look at what, yeah. he, what he was not able to do but uh, others did and then we could uh, improve our settlement. Final thing, this organization could survive to the end of IGF that is projected to be in 2010 because uh, we adopted the model and uh, we could well uh, save even the name unless uh, uh, IGF becomes a trademark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thomas, maybe not. Uh, 
Okay, my, my Muna, just a, a brief one because there was the uh, question, and I think there were two, two questions in the back, and we'll have to wrap just, up. Just to reinforce yeah. what uh, Stefano just said, it depends on the country. In my country, we start the, this process just at the end of tennis, and what we try to achieve is how, at the national level, we could implement the Danish agenda. And IGF is just one of our topic. It's not, uh, it's a big one, but it's Digital solidarity also is one of our, our topics. So it's, it's not a national IGF thing, following the IGF, no. It is the Tunis agenda, and on the paragraph um, 1,000, I think. Um, 1,000, I think. The, pa the paragraph that says that there should be national and yeah, national yeah, dialogue. I don't remember the number, but there's a specific one. Uh, on, on the Tunis agenda, and what we try to is to follow the Tunis agenda uh, at the national level, and also to help all the country, uh, the West Africa country, because we try to harmonize what we are doing at the regional level. So we also involve those uh, coming from these other countries. Thank you. Uh, I think actually the, one of the lessons is that saying you prepare for the IGF internationally is the best alibi for bringing people together at first. <laughs> Just to add to what has been said, it was very similar, uh, 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 like to, to to the UK and others in in Europe. We didn't, we do not have any decision structure. Basically, we have we are a group of people who are in the core of a mailing list, and there's more people who joined in later, who was who were added to the core, or were, who were put in CC. That's basically the structure. We have some twos and some CCs, and 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 that's it. And uh, basically, decisions were taken. When everybody agreed, they were taken on, on the spot, and when there was no agreement, there was basically the time they decided, said, okay, we have to decide until tomorrow, those who are not there, <laughs> otherwise we are too late. That was basically the decision mechanism. And maybe one interesting thing, we also decided that we would have some kind of messages that we didn't want to negotiate because there was no room for negotiation. We also wanted to messages to show the diversity of, of views and of perspectives uh, uh, within or across Europe. Uh, and, and so we agreed to have some messages that we will call the messages that we, the initiators, have heard at the Eurodic in order to kind of take an editorial responsibility and show that it's not something negotiated. It, does, it can even be contradictory because yeah. we heard this, but we also heard that. And, 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 uh, it's a mixture between the chairman's report and the summary of synthesis. Paper. Yes, but the, the interesting thing was that we that were convinced that we would not negotiate on those messages. It took us one month <laughs> to agree on those messages. This is something that we have to find out a, a more a, 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 a better structure to say maybe we just sit together on the same evening and do not yes. go away unless we agreed on the messages and that's it and that's where they are. This is something we have to discuss in the future also. Maybe we would need some more resources. We, it would be nice to have somebody who would kind of do a website with a little more time or kind of a backup secretary or whatever, but this is all open to discussion and there are still people joining in, ISOC, ECC and others are coming in, so it's an open uh, thing. Can I, can I just pass, uh, I know that Bob Graham wants to make a comment, but can I just pass the mic here? Uh, just for, for, for suggestions, once again, we'll try to organize uh, a mechanism for further interaction on, on this. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Michel Balarav, uh, representing the, the Belgium Internet Observatory, which is the multi-stakeholder platform on Internet governance. Unfortunately, uh, we didn't have time in this session to discuss methodologies that are used to stimulate discussion between stakeholders that have different priorities, but also different knowledge about sometimes issues that are very technical, uh, legal aspects etc. I would like to pinpoint two uh, aspects of our uh, work uh, in Belgium very briefly. First of all, um, we had the, the same structure as, as you have uh, in, in, in your countries and, and the interesting uh, examples you gave uh, us today. But we changed our structure at the beginning of this year. We had a board of 15 members representing civil society, um, ministries, the businesses, uh, etc. We have our working book groups, um, around 20, 30 members, depending on the subject. We added a level, namely 
a research team, multidisciplinary research team yeah. uh, about legal aspects, socio-economic and technological aspects because we have experienced that um, preparing the meetings with our working group the different organizations have different knowledge about an issue. So the research team prepares a document to give a common knowledge about an issue to start the discussion. Issue papers with the different yes, dimensions. issue papers, we discuss that. And then a second and last point I would like to make is concerning the methodologies. Mm -hmm. uh, we have seen during the, these days uh, in IGF, different kind of workshops. Uh, uh, we use uh, participatory methods to stimulate discussion uh, and to, um, to give more creative uh, examples and uh, comments on uh, the ideas that are generated not only to come to policy advice, but also to create instruments that can be used in schools or other uh, institutions uh, that we like to sensitize uh, upon the issues. If I remember well, you mentioned that you have more or less a typology of, yes. of things. So we, we have, have a catalog. Yes, yes. We, we, we have, have a catalog now, of... Uh, this is one of the key elements that I would like to circulate because this is very relevant also to the organization of the IGF itself we call workshops things that are very different. Sometimes they're awareness raising, sometimes they try to finalize an issue. So it's interesting to know that there is um, a catalog of best pra of practices yeah. that can be circulated and I, I will be looking forward to, uh, to getting it. There was another uh, comment and uh, I think afterwards uh, we'll have to wrap up because there must be another workshop in this room. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Fernando Perini from IDRC, and actually, it's more to share, uh, add one thing to the to the discussion is that there is a specific initiative. There was a meeting in Latin America and Caribbean specifically, uh, prepar preparing for the IGF, and this was uh, took place in August. 20th this year with more than 100 people from the region that were discussing specifically the four teams of the IGF and we had panels and discussions and we also prepared a uh, well, this was organized by LACNIC, uh, REITS and APC uh, in Latin America and where we were discussing the four teams and, and also prepared a specific a declaration that has all these imperfections of, of course, people said different things and we try to summarize and put, and we don't think that this is necessarily representative of something from the region, but was a process of a consultation that in this kind of um, bottom-up initiatives that wants to feed into the, the entire process. And I think that was, it was indeed a very valid process and I was very, uh, very well received by the community and there was of course a lot of interactions as well with the more structural process in Latin America that we are doing on uh, regional plan for the information society, Latin America and Caribbean that we are doing together with uh, where um, ECLAC is the secretariat uh, for the ELAC. So I just wanted to mention it's that and I think that's I an important heard. initiative. Yes. It was discussed and then we had mailing lists discussing in different days in more depth also the specific issues in preparation for this IGF. Just this, is, this is perfect. I had heard about this initiative and it didn't fit it in. Uh, we are now overstepping on uh, somebody else's uh, space. I want to thank you very, very much for having spent the time with us. Thank, thank you to the panelists. We'll, try to make this a, a very dynamic uh, coalition and please leave your card if you want to be put on the uh, on the mailing list uh, leave your card here no you don't <laughs> no the panelists are do not have to put their cards <laughs> good morning sir from India. Thank you very India, much. We do not have any um, IGF, national IGF. No, and I suppose in a country your size it will yeah, be an interesting thing. <laughs> it might be. Have your cards. Um, no, I don't have it anymore. I will circulate everything. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh,